He was no longer a sworn representative of the Queen or of the people. He was conducting the daily business of the Queen and the people, um, but doing it for the Parliament at that time. Now, in November 9th, 2001, of course, Premier Beattie announced that he, was, he presented to the Parliament the new Queensland of Con uh, Constitution of Queensland Bill 2001. And, of course, all the people and the government were told it was to modernise Queensland. So they're all in great favour of being modernised, obviously. Queensland has always had um, the thought process that they, um, through Joe, that they were sovereign and they had more rights than a lot. We were talking about um, an arrogance. Queensland has always had a touch of that over the years. Um, in some ways, quite rightly, it's a beautiful place and everyone wants to move there, so that's a, an opinion. However, so that constitution was assented to by the Governor, stamped with this public seal, on the 3rd of December 2001, became law. So as of 2001, this constitution's in place in Queensland, because remember, without the Governor-General law there to make sure it linked in with the Australian constitution, it was illegal. However, you cannot call a government law illegal. Governments, if you go to court and try and call something illegal, you lose the case straight away. No government law is illegal because they're allowed to make laws under the power of peace and good government. That's why we have this fellow here to make sure that we're protected. With him gone, anything could happen, and it did. The Queensland Constitution came in place. Now, what happened from then on, and I have got some notes here that I do have to read from because obviously there's a lot of laws, but I won't give you all the notes and the numbers and things, just certainly send me after us if you want them. What then happened is that they then moved into bringing all the other laws into place. Now one of the first things they did was form a corporation. So on June the 7th, 2002, six months after the Constitution came in place, the Act, um, Corporations Act 2001 was brought in and we now have the Brigalow Corporation in Queensland. Now, the Brigalow name, you won't find in any documentation. Originally, the old, in the Old Crown Lands Act, the federal government gave a lot of money to the Queensland government to develop what was termed the Brigalow Belt, about four million acres around Rockhampton. Now, the Old Crown Lands Act has been converted to the Land Act 94, so that was one of the ones that was reprinted. Uh, and this is where the corporation comes into place. In essence, what happened then was through this Land Act of 1994, the Queensland Government moved all the Crown lands and all community lands and all land that has been sold out of Crown land, which is your fee simple ownership, all land in New South Wales, uh, sorry, in Queensland, they moved it into this Brigalow Corporation. And to do that, they changed the Land Act, the Land Title Act, the Property Law Act, etc., etc. They were all reframed and reprinted to make the necessary changes. So all your land in Queensland now has technically come under the Queensland Constitution and the corporation's ownership. So they've got that in place. Um, now, there's quite a lot of other acts were changed. The Corporation Act came in. Um, you'll notice that as soon as the Corporation Act came in, any Queensland document you look at now carries a copyright print. Now, how can government have a copyright if the government are elected by us and they're doing our role? Yet the Queensland Corporation now, Queensland Government now has a copyright on everything. And if you go to court, you cannot get a copy of the transcript without paying because it is copyright of the Queensland Government. You cannot um, publish it on a website. They will tell you to take it off because it is copyright. So that information is no longer available to us as a free right as the people in, in Australia or in Queensland either. So they've set this in place. Now, under the definition of acts, under the definition in the Acts Interpretation Act of a person, that includes a body politic or a corporate as well as an individual. So in Queensland now, under the Acts Interpretation Act, which is another one that's been reprinted, you are now classed as a member of the corporation. You are classed as a corporation in yourself and a member of the corporation, which means that they've not only claimed your land, they've also claimed your body. Um, and please... This information is all available there. Um, they did this through the Repins Act, the Statutory Instruments Act and the Legislative Standards Act, which were all changed in 1992 and then reprinted in the 2001. Uh, the only part of the Australian Constitution which is recognised in Queensland is commences at Section 9. They have removed the recognition of the High Court and the Federal Court through the Supreme Court Act. So you have no recognition of the High Court. So when you go to the High Court now with a case, 
Queen's Angels can just say, flip it off, because they don't recognise it. So where we had the separation of powers here that gives us our protection, through the Supreme Court Act in Queensland, you now have all government departments and all courts are now underneath the government. There is only one structure in Queensland now. All these are under the government now and they obey the government. That is why they were saying to us, you are right but you lose. Because they are now governed by this constitution and they cannot take any notice of this one. We know that a lot of the judges are very unhappy with it because they have been feeding us information in subtle ways through their comments in the cases. They couldn't say to us, go and investigate this. The High Court could not say that to us. So it was a matter of a process. But when we were getting there, they were going, you're right, you still lose, but you're right. So they were trying to help. So when we started to find this, we stopped taking the cases to court because we realised then we would, were going to lose. So we were actually in the process of a very large case going to the High Court, which now will it's not going to hit up against this because that's what was happening. We were hitting up against that and couldn't go past it. It's now going to come on top of it and basically say to the High Court, if this was done legitimately, then please explain what we own. If this was done without referendum, etc., does it still stand? So you've got to ask all the right questions, which the guys up the back were talking about yesterday. You've got to ask the right questions, which we're in the process of doing. However, you guys in Queensland are still in this situation. Now, those in the other states might say, well, oh, dear, poor Queensland, I'm glad I'm not moving there. However, you've got to understand this is happening in every state. This is not just Queensland. Queensland's just taken the first big leap. WA is really bad. Um, New South Wales removed its governor general, its general in, um, I think it was 1987. Um, we're pretty sure it's gone in South Australia. The only, if you look on the websites for the governors, not a one of them refer to their role as being to protect the constitution for the people and the Queen. They all say they do as they're told. The, that the Premier of the state tells them what to do. So they're all admitting that they no longer follow the structure. So, okay, we'll get back to this. Now, okay, so you've got this structure. Now, when I say that the Queensland is a corporation, the state of Queensland is registered with the US Securities and Exchange Commission. I've got the number here. The Queensland Treasury Corp is registered under another number. I've got copies of their annual reports for, federal go for foreign governments and political subdivisions. Why on earth the state of Australia would send their treasury documents and their budgets to the world is debatable unless there's a, a, uh, a moneyed reason for it. And um, I've also got the Queensland State Accounts there 2006 which carries gross private information. In other words, they're analysing what they own in the state for their budgets. Now, go back to what's happened here. The elected members of the parliament in Queensland, that you elected them, you voted these people in, and they did nothing to stop this happening. And contrary to the criminal code, 1995, and they're all, every politician is subject to that under chapter seven, which is the proper administration of government, each one of these politicians up there has created for themselves a little dominion where everyone in the state and your ownership, you are chattels. So they might come and look at your property and say, well, gee, I quite fancy that, and I'm in partnership with a developer. They can make a law that resumes your property from you, gives you very little in return, and then do what they want with it. And they're quite, they're going to be protected by the courts in Queensland because the courts now work for the government. You have no separation of powers. When you don't have separation of powers and you don't have the constitution, you have no common law or equity. So you have no common law or equity left in Queensland. Your common law is gone. Don't forget common law is what protects your ownership. All you have now is civil law and statute law, or as the fellows were talking about, maritime law. Uh, and civil law and statute law is all about government. We are one of the few countries left in this world that has a common law system of law, a protection of our ownership. If you go to any other country around Europe, People do as they're told. They've worked out methods and means of combating government, but they do as they're told. We are one of the few countries. Canada's in a very bad way. America's going crazy. Uh, but a lot of the correspondence I get is from Canada where they're working on the, this same loss of rights as well. You're constantly being told that the Constitution doesn't work, that it's old hat, that it's 
all sorts of disparaging remarks about it. Constantly being told you don't have a Bill of Rights, which is totally untrue, because why did the federal government use the Bill of Rights in 1995 to verify that you couldn't impeach a parliamentarian from what they said in court? And why has the, uh, the ACT government incorporated the Bill of Rights into their acts in 2004? Um, you're constantly being told that Magna Carta's old hat, etc. Yet all these things are the support of common law. So they're telling you that so you don't notice its removal. And this, this is exactly what's happened in Queensland. Everyone up there now is worrying about the council and fighting about the council. Council's nothing, guys. Council is just a, a, a level of government in both constitutions. This is what... And it's, and it's just a furphy to get you to stop looking at the real issue. This is the real issue. Council's just... You, you, it's like a thorn in your foot where you've got the cancer growing in your head kind of thing. Um, so, with the judiciary, with the government tiers rather, including all local councils, they're all levels of parliament. Now, what they also did was they changed the Executive Act. Now, when you move, remove the governor, he was the executive, right? He was the one that made sure this was all safe. When you remove the governor and put him down here, the Executive Act has been changed and the Premier has taken that role. So we've got the Constitution in place, which he's probably set up, or she, she's been part of it, I guess. Um, she is now the executive. So when a rule needs to be made, she decides whether it's a good rule or a bad rule, tells the workers, who are now the parliament, etc., to pass it, and it's done. And the governor, in his new role as parliamentary secretary, stamps it, and it's law. So there is no separation of powers. The people are now out of the whole structure completely. And that's your danger. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's essentially a dictatorship, except it doesn't carry that form where she walks around with the guards beside her and shoots you if you... Well. <laughs> well. So, now why did they remove... Why did they want your land? That would be the next question. Well, if, if you're going to have a corporation, you've got to have assets. Now, an asset base allows you to loan, it allows you to sell, it allows you to trade. We know that all the governments in Australia are moving into corporations. Um, pretty well every tier in New South Wales is a corporation. For instance, not long ago, um, Long Bay Jail was sold and it was on the news and it was sold by the corporation that owned it, which was a private corporation. Now, Long Bay Jail wasn't being used, but it kind of sparked my thought process and thought, well, okay, how many private corporations are owning these parts? And of course, in a corporate structure, especially if we are out of the governmental system, they are able to be sold by the government. We know they're trying to sell Telstra, all, all of Telstra. They're talking about selling the um, electricity boards, all of which, if they're private corporations, all corporations can be sold into private hands. So, Queensland uses your asset base to raise money, uh, and to raise money in a big way, especially when you're looking at the Treasury documents going out to foreign investors. Now, the thing is, one of the things that um, came through in a newspaper article the other day is that the Queensland Government are actually trying to change the rating structure, which they have changed already through the acts that they've moved into the new reprints, where rather than your land being valued on, a, on an unimproved capital value, they want to start valuing it on an improved capital value. Yes, I mean, they've started this with um, shopping centres because their thought process is that you know, they're only getting an unimproved capital value, but this shopping centre's got all these structures, so they're worth more money. Now, the court did put a stop to it, but it won't end there. You know it'll keep going. Um, and mainly because I think it was Chermside Shopping Centre was now revalued at some extraordinary amount of money, which meant that their rates had moved up to $34 million from maybe a couple of million dollars. So if they own your land and can make these rules and this guy stamps them off, what right have you got then to say, well, this is too heavy a rating structure, I can't afford that. You lose the house, what happens? They get it and they've got it to sell. Now, you could say that the banks would say, well, this has got to stop because the banks have got some ownership in their land. But the banks are in the same boat as you guys. They've only got technically a statutory ownership on your land. They've only got a bit of paper saying that you owe them some money for your land. Just as you've only got a bit of paper, and if you look at your... Um, title deeds, they actually refer to you as a tenant until you own the land. 